And then we've seen on the other side of the equation, everyone saying, okay, but what do I build? And I don't have either the developers or the tools to build anything. So I'll just gobble up this land and hope that my positioning in the land becomes valuable and it has to come from somewhere. And if it comes from the way that we've created that type of content, 3D assets in the past, we'll be waiting a hundred years. So if it were that we had to take that path, it would never come to be. So we have to create the tools that allow people to contribute. And that's one of the big things on our positioning with Futureverse. A lot of people came out of the gate in this space and said, we're building the future because we think that the future is a collective vision that everyone builds together. And we are back. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. I don't care if you're driving or if you're in a bathroom stall. Put your hands together. I don't care how dangerous it is for our next guest coming up. I'm really, really pumped. We have some magic happening. My name is Rich Robinson, entrepreneur in residence at Animoca Brands. And this is the Founder Insights Podcast, where we dissect and peel back and learn lessons from kick-ass, amazing world-class builders in Web3. Welcome to the pod from Futureverse, Shara and Aaron, everybody. Woo! Yeah, I'm putting my hands together. Hey, everyone. I'm, cl I'm clapping for Shara. Yeah, all right, good. Nice. <laughs> Great. We did an AMA recently, and I was really, really pumped and blown away by what you guys are doing. You guys are down. Uh, in New Zealand. And I often talk about if I'm going to leave the Hobbit hole and the comfort of the Shire to go to Mordor, then the freaks and weirdos and elves and, and hobbits and dwarves, uh, that get me on the way. And Yatsio is my Gandalf taking me into the future of web three, but you guys are actually in the, in the Shire. Yeah, so we're there. it's pretty, pretty amazing. Excellent. Yeah, I, I live in one of those little like holes in the in the in the earth. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. The developers <laughs> like that because it's very dark, and then they can yeah. just eat instant noodles. So, so wow. So, give us please an intro to Futureverse and kind of like what's what's the latest greatest, and then we'll we'll dive back deeper into your origin story from there. Yeah. So, Futureverse, where the future can happen. Um, I guess what. Futureverse is about is enabling um, the idea that everyone has of the open metaverse in their heads to to actually be true. Um, you know, if you look out there in the landscape of um, the the landscape of the idea of the metaverse, what we see mostly is games. Um, you know, things we've had for twenty years or more. Um, and the idea of this kind of open and interoperable um, space for for users and content hasn't really been realized. And that's because it's super hard. It's a great idea. And naturally, everyone kind of, um, you know, intuitively believes that, that that's the way that the internet should work um, in the future. But... Um, but it's never really been put together in a way that can actually make that happen. I think a lot of that is because it's it's really hard in multiple dom domains. And so to do it right, you have to um, work on multiple complex domains at the same time and bring them all together. And no one's really tried that in the same way that Futureverse has had. So we're a technology company that's like a enabling the foundation of the open metaverse. And we're supercharging that with really great web three native content um, and bringing it to the masses through world class brands that everybody knows in their homes today. Beautiful. Yeah. So I've, I've heard the metaverse succinctly described as just decentralized tokenized and fun. And that's, that's very, that's very broad, but take us into what, you think are, are in people's heads because it, it is a wide range of what the metaverse can be from ready player one all the way down to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sending a text message. So I'm in the metaverse because it's virtual, right? Yeah. So I think, I think, um, 
that that definition, if you had to pick three words, is not a bad one. Um, our our kind of view is that um, the metaverse is the internet growing up, um, and and what we mean by that is um, probably two core ideas. Um, one that the idea of immersive convergence, which is actually a, a phrase that um, WeChat use, who I think are probably the world's leader in like what the early idea of the metaverse is. And that is that we used to have these silos of user experience and we still do to a certain extent on the internet today. And um, that might be like commerce or gaming or um, finance or um, social or media um, or communications. And as the internet's been evolving, those things have been like coming together. And so the metaverse is just the next evolution of that, where these experiences, the walls between these experiences are broken down and um, the way we connect with people and interact with the things in our digital society becomes much more fluid. Um, the second part is that the idea of immersive spaces being the place that the internet lives is going to be more and more popular. Um, you know, we've seen the progression from like, desktop flat web through to mobile led and then social led and now um, we're seeing the emergence of immersive led internet experiences and you look at um, the generations that have gone through those different phases of technology their, their natural inclination is to like go towards the experience they grew up with and kids today are growing up with immersive experiences you know 200 plus million monthly active users in roblox um, those kids are going to want an internet experience that's immersive when they when they grow up, and so what what the metaverse is 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 the internet um, growing up, becoming more immersive, and if we do it right, the open metaverse is about personal ownership of your data, your social graph, the things you value, um, and the only way to achieve to achieve that ownership and that openness is if you use community owned infrastructure, which is what web three is all about. Beautiful. Wow. You've thought about that before for sure. Our little internet is all grown up. I love, I love that. But my, you know, my favorite part, of course, that immersive part is coming. Yes. But in the meantime, I spent 25 years in China and I experienced the growth of WeChat and that's, the one experience, and you look at Elon Musk with X.com, he tasted that as well, too. And that's what he's trying to uh, accomplish totally. with X.com. But when you have a wallet integrated into every aspect of your digital life, and it becomes not only seamless and frictionless, but almost like delightful, yeah. then it really, because right now we're re all struggling with onboarding people to wallets and making wallets work. Whereas in WeChat, it just works. <laughs> um the I think you're right you know that like it's a surprise when I ask people who do you think is the like you know leader in the metaverse space people jump to Fortnite or Roblox or and I'm not saying that they aren't contributing and that they aren't doing a part of it but but I always go to WeChat um because they've really like nailed that um immersive convergence more the convergence than the immersive um but but you can bet your bottom dollar that that's, you know, that's the next step in terms of um, user interfaces. And the thing that's been missing in the, um, in the delivery of that vision is the ability to make it easy to create those immersive content spaces. And now we have generative content AI. We can like get the WordPress experience or the social media page experience, but for the immersive web. And when those, things went from a developer had to make your website to I could click to make my website. Then everyone had a website, every business had a website. When it went from, um, you know, from websites to I can make my own personal page and update that personal page, then everyone had a personal page. And so the, the evolution of immersive spaces is very coupled with artificial intelligence. And, um, and so when people are out there talking narratives and stuff like that, Oh, like AI is the hot thing now, not the metaverse, or Web3's like the hot thing, not not AI. 
it's like, guys, these are just like different lenses on the same thing. Um, and so, and that's what makes it complex, you know, like to be someone who can make the idea of the open metaverse work, you have to be an expert in all of those domains and hardly anyone is. And so that's why we had to pull together 11 companies to create Futureverse because you can't find those skills in one place. Wow. Let's, let's, let's double click on that, please. That's extraordinary. Yeah. So we, yeah. So that's how the kind of Futureverse came about was, you know, we had um, been incubating a series of companies that were solving different parts of what we thought the future of the internet looked like. Um, and once they'd got enough progress in their own domain, we said like the only way to prove this is going to work is to bring everyone together and make it one, you know, one streamlined customer experience with those bits inside of it. Um, because trying to do that with partners, you know, at large um, is really, really challenging. Um, and so um, if we can deliver that in the same way, I guess, like Apple has taken the approach of like creating, you know, that um, vertically integrated customer experience, but do it in the open way. Um, and so we can, um, so we can prove that this stuff works, connect it to high quality IP that people love. Uh, the bit you said about what, you know, that short de um, definition of the internet make, uh, the, of the metaverse, make it fun. Um, you know, we can, we can pull that off. And so, um, that was the rationale behind bringing these things together was like, we can really crack the user experience of the little jumps between each one of those things that takes it from, um, something that nerds can play with to something that your, your grandma can use. Bold, bold and brilliant. Can you share part of that journey and some of the triumphs, tribulations, uh, along the way and some of the different pieces that you've put together. Yeah. Um, I mean, triumphs and tribulations, God, there are lots of those. Um, I think in terms of things that we put together, like roughly three bits to the stack. So we have like what we'd call like platform infrastructure. Um, then we've got, um, platform or powered by Futureverse toolkit. And then we've got the, um, you know, hero experiences. So at the infrastructure layer, it's things like our, our digital identity and single sign on thing, um, which is called future pass. So that's your, your wallet. We don't call it a wallet because that's kind of scary. Um, and, um, it's an easy, simple way for, for people to onboard into the open metaverse without having to think about private keys and all that kind of stuff that stops adoption. Um, we have the root network, which is our kind of underlying um, database infrastructure and that records where assets live and helps manage the personal ownership of those things, which is what blockchains are really good for. Um, we have um, things like our social graph and, um, and our asset register, which help create interoperability of the people we love and the things that we love. Um, and so, um, those are the kinds of things that that infrastructure layer in the powered by Futureverse, um, toolkit, that's about like how we connect content to that infrastructure. So these are tools for creating, um, unlimited, totally unique avatars or, um, you know, generating music on the fly that makes you feel wonderful or generating 3g objects, um, so that you can be a game developer too, or. Um, the tools that help put those things inside of game engines, like our, our recently re announced um, strategic partnership with the Emergence and Crucible teams. And so in that space, we're, you know, providing tools for our teams to, bu to build experiences and increasingly um, brands and other developers to connect their IP and their communities to those, to that infrastructure. And then the top layer, it's all about experiences. So, like how can we showcase through hero IP, how that comes together for an end user an experience that's fun and um, feels like they've, they're able to um, live the vision. Like you said, that they imagine when they watch something like ready player one. It's like an all-star team that you've, uh, you've assembled to just accelerate and amplify the, the impact. It's uh, it's quite uh 
quite fascinating. What's what's the result of that? Like, what is the end user going to experience, and what's the the roadmap that you can share in the future verse? Do you want to go, Shara? You want to talk about our old star team to start off with? <laughs> well, I will say that what is interesting, and I think when every when we say we merge eleven companies, everyone always has the same look that you had, which is like, this is crazy. And what's, what's crazy you know, like a are, fox. Yeah, we are crazy, but it, you have to be, to be at the beginning of a new industry and, and be able to build when there is no roadmap for how to build, you have to lay down the roads. And so that's a lot of what Aaron and I throughout our careers have never shied away from and always run toward. So we kind of connected just on that as entrepreneur, like hybrid entrepreneur, venture capitalists. We met by way of, I invested into Altered State Machine, which is one of Aaron's companies that's ultimately one of the biggest parts of Futureverse. So, and having invested in them, but also being sort of an operator entrepreneur, I got my hands really dirty with them for a year once I, I invested and then Aaron and I started talking about what does this look like in the end and how do we take all of these pieces that are the necessary infrastructure that are separate, they'll never find their way to connect alone, not necessarily the ones we did, but any of them. There are people siloed everywhere building bits and pieces of the user journey. But given that the metaver metaverse is the interconnectivity of it all, there needed to be a way to bring it together to have that proof point of what it is. So the assembly of these companies gave us 250 people, which in a lot of ways gives us a significant head start, given that these companies had been around for six years building. So a lot of our, our teams that are brilliant are not unfamiliar with this space, whereas there are a lot of people obviously who are who don't have knowledge and expertise of, in Web3 and in blockchain. And so you have to go out there and find them. And we saw the boom of financing happen, obviously, when, when the market was in its bull run. And then everyone had all this capital but had to go find people to even utilize the capital to build what they wanted to build. So our assembly of these companies put us in a position to run really fast. And that's what we set out to do. And so to answer your question in the end, what does this look like? And I, Aaron started to touch on it. And it's the, the, the thing that's really interesting. Everyone says right now, which we all know, well, oh, the metaverse is dead. We've reached its end point. It's over. Well, that's like saying that the internet is over. So are you, is the internet just going to cease to exist? And we won't connect digitally anymore. And then they say, oh, now it's only AI. And, and one of the things Aaron and I talk about at nauseum is well if all of these ai tools empower people to create anything they imagine objects characters environments everything where is all that content going to go we saw what happened with the explosion of ugc it exploded the web 2 social platforms and now there's excessive content on those platforms and it's content overload and we're obviously using within that content we're, we're discovering new talent new new concepts now it's the immersive version of that which is going to be take all the things you create with ai and put it somewhere well where do you put it into experiences into into worlds into immersive forms of the internet that allow you to house all of those things you're making so we believe that at the end of the day what this is about is giving the tools to consumers to create the things that they imagine. And that will ultimately scale the metaverse because one of the things we've seen in a lot of the, a lot of the platforms that have come to date has been, okay, well, here's a space, here's all this land. And then we've seen on the other side of the equation, everyone saying, okay, but what do I build? And I don't have either the developers or the tools to build anything. So I'll just gobble up this land and hope that my positioning in the land becomes valuable and or I'll wait until there are tools for me as a general consumer to build. And so that's kind of where we sit in the market is ultimately the infrastructure and toolkit for consumers to actually create the things that will scale the metaverse because we need all the stuff that's going to effectively decorate it, run around in it, it socially communicate with one another. We need all of that too. We need that content and it has to come from somewhere. And if it comes from, the way that we've created that type of content, 3D assets in the past, we'll be waiting a hundred years because I started my career in the movie business and the cost for the visual effects and the creation of these 3D assets. And we know because we have a lot of unannounced 
a movie IP that we're working with and to bring these assets in from the formats that they're in, it's thousands of gigs for a very limited number of assets. So if it were that we had to take that path, it would never come to be. So we have to create the tools that allow people to contribute. And that's one of the big things on our positioning with Futureverse. A lot of people came out of the gate in this space and said, we're building the future. We came out and said, we're not building the future because we think that the future is a collective vision that everyone builds together. And it won't come to be the way we're talking about it if everyone doesn't come together. And that includes the interoperability of chains and the removal of these big words and making the tech invisible because no one is excited about talking about tech they don't understand or know how to use. And it's only an inhibitor of more humans entering the space and playing around with the tools we're making. So that's kind of our, our view of where it goes and what we're doing to help it get there. Wow. I am absolutely uninhibitedly excited about that vision. And I think of Elon Musk, who is, you know, pretty acquisitive and being able to pull things together and it's not for the faint of heart and it's not for first time founders, but you guys are forged by fire. You guys have worked together before you guys are covered in scabs and calluses and scar tissue like armor to lead other people. But also Shara, you talk about your movie industry experience you know, as I get to understand the movie industry more, it's, it's really every movie is kind of a cobbled together, like group of disparate, um, you know, organizations that come together to make this movie. And if you have that uh, skill set to be able to be the maestro and have that orchestra come together, that's an amazing skill set. So, so that's, uh, that's really extraordinary. Yeah. That's something I've learned actually in my time, like coming from tech and getting in more in this like creative side is like producers are awesome people. When you see the credits and it's produced by those people are crazy because <laughs> they are, Absolutely. they're like literally juggling, you know, thousands of balls in the air with like dozens of companies and, and, um, and trying to make something work, you know, that's, uh, that's simple and, and fun to be a part of. And I guess that's, that's a little bit of what we're trying to do too. My, my friend in China, Peter Lore, he started uh, legendary Asia and he did the movie, the great wall. And he would tell me stories about, you know, he only slept four and a half hours a night naturally because he's already this, you know, clock speed, crazy guy. And like, he's just, you know, constantly two different phones and it's unbelievable what producers do. And that's a, uh, that's like, if I may, American basketball, but Stefan Curry is like, you know what? The three point line is out here and I'm going to shoot it at 95% of my heart rate. And he's just like pushing things to the limit and then just reinvents the game. And that's what that's, it seems like that's what you guys are doing. It's like, nope, the three point line is way over there and we're, we're, we're going out there and come catch up to us if you want to. And we're going to be doing it 110% of our heart rate. I mean, we get that a lot. It's like, you guys actually like, this is complex. You know, like, why don't you focus on something simple? Well, the thing about focusing on something simple is you'll never solve the problem because like I said earlier, like what, what needs solving is cracking the user experience across multiple complex domains. So you have to work in all of those domains to do that. And, um, and so that's kind of, that's the mission, you know, that's the thing that we're trying to do. And I think in small ways already, we're proving that. Like if I think if you went out there and talked to, you know, the community at large that's in the space in Web3, we're well known for being the smooth as butter, you know, user experience team. And, you know, we're taking that and putting that on steroids and everything else that we're doing. And um, and so um, what's out there now is pretty good. What's coming is like, holy shit. Smooth as butter. Indeed. It's all about the user and it's all about their experience. And smooth as butter is beautiful because what, yeah. And I think that the thing that's really kind of different is um, not different, but maybe unique about us is like the idea about creating this user journey that is fun and simple isn't a new idea for us. It's something that we built a thesis around seven years ago and mapped out and said deliberately, these are the problems to solve. And this is the, um, the way that we have to, um, you know, these are the technology challenges that we have to um, create solutions for to get to that user experience. And I think if you look across Web3, the, the, the idea of user experience is starting to pop up more as a narrative. Um, but 
we've been thinking about this for you know a long time now and when you start to think about it you start to discover that a lot of the way that web3 was built and engineered just didn't have that in mind and there's hard work to go back and think about it and re-engineer it to get there um whereas because it's been our plan from day one we've got this momentum already and we just kind of keep building on top of it i like how you shared previously that it's called a pass and it's not and it's and it's something that that's lexicon that we're already used to and also users are very spoiled from web2 2. web2 2 is a pretty smooth experience but of course it is now yeah. it's three steps backwards uh in many ways with with web3 and what 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 are some of the the details of some like a user experience that you think like you can share that you've kind of cracked yeah i mean i think like a really good example right now is if you go into the um app stores and download the fifa ai league which is a collaboration between us and fifa um you can uh download that install that start playing that and in that process you've created a um on-chain digital identity a smart wallet account minted your nfts um interacted with an ai agent that you personally own um all in the space of a few minutes without even knowing wow and there are 500,000 downloads come on how come i how come i'm how come we aren't trumpeting this from the rooftops of people of you know people who are going through that process and did in 90 i'd guarantee 99% of them don't understand that you know the infrastructure of web3 is in the back end of that and that's exactly the way we want it you know our goal if you look at our strategy you know the first line in our strategy document is make the technology invisible make it feel like magic and so um so the day we stop talking about web3 and nfts and blockchains and smart contracts is the day we win because if it just becomes so natural that we um don't think about it then we've done our jobs in the same way that you don't think about tcpip and pop3 and sql and C++ when you're using your email. Indeed, indeed. And we stopped saying Web 2 10 years ago, but then it came back when we started talking Web 3. No, no one even knew what Web 2 was. The general consumer was like, what's Web 2? It was just the internet. And, that, and that's what the metaverse is going to be. Like, we won't be calling it the metaverse. It'll just be our digital life. Yeah, the information. Um, hey, I'm sorry, honey. I'll be right there. I'm on the information superhighway. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Well, hey, Shara, tell me a little bit about, we, we have, uh, you know, five minutes left. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, background and some of the lessons you've learned along the way that you think are insightful for our, our listeners and how you're bringing that to the future verse. You know, I think it's interesting when you, when we hit the film producer topic, it's funny because I wanted to, I started my career as a 20 year old in the film business producing movies and had a really fortunate run into selling one of my first movies really young. I was 21 years old and it kind of catapulted me to be an executive in the film business while I was a kid. And what you, and I wanted to be a film producer because I saw a quote from Spielberg in a magazine that was like producers are the people that can put out fires and they're the people that everyone relies on to solve problems. And I was like, well, that's me and my family and in my life. So it feels like that should be me in my work world too. And then I later learned through going to film school that other big producers started to quote and describe producing as being the person who hires the best people around them to make them look really good and keeps them glued together in a way that actually outputs a product. There's, there's really no version and actually limited number of stories of movies starting and dying. Because once you start one and you have the financing and you bring in the casting director and you cast the movie and you write it and you do everything and you're on set, you don't really have a choice. At that point, you're too far in the hole with a lot of different people to, to end up saying, oh, it, di it didn't work out. We had a blow up on set. And so we're out of money. Goodbye. It doesn't, you can't do that at that point. There, there's too much money that goes into the movies we see on screen. And so it, it's a level of accountability and responsibility and keeping your eye on so many different areas and understanding what everyone does so that you could be 
helpful, but you can get out of the way and let the best people contribute to the output of a product. And it also teaches you to throw your ego out the window because the final thing on the screen is a product of tons and tons and tons of people and how it got there is a result of the energy and contribution of all of those people. And I think that correlates so much to being an entrepreneur. So I started in the movie business, ended up being the crazy kid that had a million ideas that, that counteracted what the film business was focusing on. They were releasing every movie at the box office without understanding data, having no idea who was in the theaters. And I was the 20 year old kid who was like, this isn't going to sustain itself. We need to distribute this content online so we can understand and track audience. And that led me into a path of the early days of ad tech, of looking at how we understand audience, how we target them, how we find them, how we use metadata to help us move information and assets through the internet. And then it ultimately led to me building a, a couple startups, some of which led me deeper into entertainment and in deeper into tech. And about that, I'm shortening this, but long story short, I developed a lot of movies and started becoming a tech entrepreneur, built a few companies and ended up at the intersection of tech and entertainment where the music business and the film business and a lot of different sports all were kind of coming to me with different opportunities of, well, how do, how do you explain how we utilize this tech to further either our scale of our audiences or our revenue models? And it kind of became a a position where I knew that if I was going to contribute that type of work I, or information, I better invest in these companies and have an upside. So it kind of led me to ultimately running a fund that I started about five years ago with Scooter Braun that was focused entirely on Web3 and metaverse infrastructure because Aaron and I had sort of a similar timing of experience into crypto. I got into it in 2016, 17, started looking at what blockchain really was by way of the reading the Bitcoin paper, like how everyone really starts and then dabbling in Ethereum and going into what this could be and saying, this is the technology that will actually fuel the experiences we want to build. And it's only going to be this. So how do we experiment with it? And my last fund focused entirely on Web3 and metaverse infrastructure, where it met entertainment when it could. There, there weren't a, a million opportunities at that point. And then Aaron and I came together. So now our skill sets are complementary and different, but similar in a lot of ways. And we kind of use visuals and use storytelling, which has been the through line of my entire career, to get our vision out both to our consumers and to all of the partners we work with. All Aaron and I are doing all day long is telling the story of our vision, whether it be to a small team to move a, a product forward, whether it be to a tech team to move the infrastructure forward, or whether it be to investors or partners, or we're just telling the story because you have to, you have to show people the vision and they will get energized and they will get on board. And then you'll have more meaningful products that come out of it as a result. That's beautiful. You two are both, I talked to a lot of people, you guys are both excellent storytellers and I really smell and see the vision and that's a great place to stop you guys have been excellent i know you have to bounce aaron thank you so much for your time wow i am on fire for the future of futureverse thank you very much and uh to be continued thank you for having us thank you been great to be on wow right guys i mean i talked to a lot of web3 builders but that dynamic duo and what they're building at Futureverse is absolutely incredible. I told them later, I'm going to be like Will Ferrell from the movie Elf when Santa comes on the screen and he's like, I know him. I know him. Shara and Aaron, I know them. I think Futureverse is an amazing company to keep an eye on and please support Founder Insights Podcast, CLS. Comment, like, subscribe below, and see you next week. This podcast is for information purposes only and should not be considered as financial advice. Any opinions provided in this podcast reflect the views of the speakers only.